Uh, okay. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers to uh, giving us a so amazing uh, conference that I learned a lot from the speakers and the audience. And uh, today, I uh, and also invite me to give a talk here. So today, I would like to talk about uh, unipotent representations of real classical group. This is a joint, mainly a joint work with uh, Bing Yongsun and uh, Chen Bo Zhu. Uh, Okay, so this next page. Uh, so uh, roughly, I will first talk about the motivation uh, of the definition of uh, unipotent representation. Then I will talk about what's the meaning of unipotent representation uh, we studied uh, for the real classical group. And uh, then I will talk about the main result and uh, also some ingredients of the proof. So the motivation for the unipotent representation is kind of coming from the Arthur, uh, Arthur's conjecture, or Arthur's, Arthur's work. And actually, uh, so suppose you have uh, Arthur parameter, which, oh, okay, in the, for the real group case, is look like uh, WR, which is a very group of uh, the real, uh, real number, uh, I think, um, professor uh, Prisa, I just uh, write down the definition. It's uh, C cross times J, where J squared is, is equal to negative one, and J act on C cross by uh, by complex conjugation. And uh, then you have uh, additional SL2C copy, uh, so which map to the L group of G. And uh, so suppose you have uh, this packet, then you, uh, this, this parameter, then uh, one can Construct a uh, Arthur packet, which is from the uh, kind of global consideration, and uh, also you have a local component. So for the real case, you will have a collection of finite many representations, and the size of this packet is more or less controlled by the centralizer of uh, the component group of the centralizer of this parameter. But we like to consider a very special type of parameter, which is called a unipotent Arthur parameter. These are kind of parameters such that when it's restricted on the C cross, it is trivial. And so one question is how to construct elements in this Arthur packet uh, for a unipotent Arthur parameter. Uh, so uh, it's it's kind of quite difficult question actually. And uh, also uh, to construct this packet, I think you need kind of character identity to uh, convince people that this is a correct packet. But on the other hand, from the packet, just, uh, just from the parameter, uh, it, it's a map, more or less a map from SL2C to the dual group. So you can kind of, uh, from the jacobson morozov theorem, that you will have, uh, from this SL2C map to the L group, you will have a uh, uh, neopotent orbit OL in this uh, dual, uh, dual, uh, the dual group, the Lie algebra of the dual group. Uh, and uh, then there is a, a duality map, which given by the Lutzix, Barsenstein, and uh, uh, in the setting that G check is same as G, uh, or in a general case, G and G check are due to each other in the, uh, by Babish Vogan's work that you, from a neopotent orbit of the dual group, uh, dual Lie algebra, you will have a special neopotent orbit in the Lie algebra. So the co construction is kind of for this neopotent orbit, you will associate, uh, 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 through the Springer theory, you will associate a representation of the vowel group, and then you take the dual of this representation and it takes the special representation corresponding to the family of this representation. Uh, I, uh, no, I think it should be twisted by sign character of the, uh, then takes a special representation. Anyway, there's a construction and the 
for the classical group, uh, I think for all the group, this map LO2O is very explicitly and uh, described uh, in terms of uh, combinatorics. Uh, so then uh, Babish Vogel actually give a very precise definition of what's the meaning of spatial unipotent representation uh, with the starting point, which is the spatial unipotent orbit. So we would like to study this spatial unipotent representations. Uh, so I like to, before move to the, uh, uh, our topic, I like to say some philosophy behind the, uh, maybe Vogan's consideration is that uh, their motivation is to kind of construct a, a unitary dual of real groups, but it's, it's, this question is very difficult and it's not known in general. Uh, so on the other hand, uh, for the uh, uh, Newpotent group and solvable group, you have this Kirov theory. It's basically saying that the unitary group is corresponding to the uh, co-adjoint orbit of the Lie algebra, where, where G, if it's a uh, Newpotent or solvable group. And uh, so the idea is whether, uh, okay, so this, this con the construction is kind of called a quantization, basically. So Newpotent orbit is kind of uh, co-adjoint Newpotent orbit, or orbit is kind of corresponding to the classical mechanical system, and the unitary representation are kind of corresponding to quantum, quantum, uh, quantum mechanical system. And the, so it's kind of, quant the, the procedure is like uh, quantize the ring of regular functions on the orbit to get a new uh, representation. So this, this is uh, uh, kind of uh, another branch of uh, maybe construction or studies which not quite related to uh, Arthur's consideration. But uh, Vogel thinks that uh, this, kind, this method is called the orbit method. It's basically from an orbit in the uh, co-adjoint co orbit or orbit in the Lie algebra, uh, then construct a representation. So, but Vogel thinks that this kind of method should also play a, a principle for construct unitary dual of the uh, reductive Lie groups. So, basically, there's a perfect match that if you have a Parabol a hyperbolic orbit, uh, then you can have uh, parabolic induction in the real group picture. And if you have elliptic orbit, then you, uh, you can kind of, this, this kind of orbit is kind of correspond to the cohomological induction. Uh, okay, so, so for the parabolic induction, it's studied by many people so like uh, Heishender, Schmidt, oh, sorry, I, I think I'm late up the name here. So these two lines I become the same, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, no need to. <laughs> yeah, Mackie and uh, uh, all these people. <laughs> okay, anyway. So I, I think this, these two constructions are well known, but if you give you a unipotent orbit, what kind of representation or construction you can have. So the philosophy is that the unipotent, neopotent orbit should correspond to unipotent representation. So it's, we are going back to this kind of situation, give you a neopotent orbit, how to construct representations. So, okay, uh, here comes the a definition of spatial unipotent representation. So suppose O is a spatial uh, unipotent orbit in the uh, Lie algebra, or actually one should put the uh, dual of the Lie algebra, but anyway, we, we will identify these uh, two guys using a G invariant bilinear form. But any, uh, so this orbit will give you a infinitesimal character by reverse the uh, uh, arrow here, you, you take the dual of the spatial orbit, you will get another spatial orbit in the uh, 
you know, uh, the Dewey algebra, which will give you an infinitesimal character, just as, uh, so, so it will give you a kind of uh, unipotent as a parameter, and this, from this parameter, you can write down an a infinitesimal character. I think uh, Professor Prasad luckily just uh, describes the construction of infinitesimal character in the previous talk. Okay, so anyway, we, it will have a well-defined infinitesimal character. Then we will assume that this infinitesimal character is actually integral. Uh, uh, then uh, one can define so-called uh, uni special unipotent representation attached to this orbit if it satisfies two conditions. First is that this representation has infinitesimal character given by uh, this construction. And another condition is that the associated variety of pi is contained in the uh, this uh, orbit, uh, this closure of this special neopotent orbit. Uh, this associated variety is a kind of this A V means a complex associated variety. It's always uh, uh, an orbit closure. And uh, what we want to say is that this is exactly Actually, uh, so this condition uh, will, will tell you in this situation, special unipotent case, and uh, with the assumption that it's, it has in, integral infinitesimal character, it will tell you that actually this associated variety is, is uh, equality, equal to this O bar. Uh, and uh, then we, uh, but to, for the definition, just the uh, uh, containment is enough. And uh, this, let's just collect all the representations which are attached to uh, this neopotent orbit, call it the O uh, unipotent representation. Uh, so uh, I want to say a little bit more is that this infinitesimal character condition plus the containment uh, of the social variety actually tells you that the annihilator ideal of pi which is uh, ideal inside the universal enveloping algebra is exactly equal to the ideal attached, uh, the maximal primitive ideal attached to this orbit O. So this is the uh, maximal primitive ideal with infinitesimal character uh, chi O. Okay, with these assumptions. And uh, so if you look at the definition of this one, uh, I think people will call this definition, uh, this set uh, also will call, if you look at the literature, it, it will also be called by uh, uh, weak, spe uh, weak spatial unipotent representation because the conditions imposed on it is so weak that it, it's just Two conditions, purely local conditions. Uh, so, but one expectation is that this unipotent, th this set of uh, representations should be seen as what well, other uh, constructed or predicted. Uh, but from this expectation, uh, a natural conjecture is that because everything inside the others packet should be unitary. They are local component of automorphic forms. Uh, so this one should be, suppose the expectation is true, then this one of course should be consist of unitary representation. But in general, one can just con conjecture that this should be consist of unitary representation. And uh, uh, this is proved by uh, babish vogan for the complex groups. Uh, okay, so for this two set, when they are coincide, I think uh, when, again, this uh, should be true, I think more or less proved uh, for the complex classical groups. Uh, this, yes? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I 
think should be union of this size. Yeah. And anyway, so I think uh, Moglin has some work saying that for the uh, complex groups, uh, the theta corris uh, correspondence will give you the uh, all, all the things in this uh, unipotent uh, Arthur packet. And uh, then I think uh, Babish also has a work in uh, how volume, actually these two papers both in how uh, 70 uh, birthday volume that saying uh, what they construct, uh, what Babish construct with Vogan uh, for the complex classical groups, uh, the, the unipotent, special unipotence constructed for uh, complex uh, classical groups are actually coming from the theta correspondence. So then I think you can see that this two set, at least uh, for the complex classical groups, are the same. Uh, or or ac actually, I think should say union of them. Okay. So now we like would like to talk about uh, uh, an real groups. So uh, we will consider uh, real classical groups in the following table. Basically, uh, so it, if you complexify it, it will be also even orthogonal group and a symplectic group, all orthogonal group, and a, I think symplectic group. But uh, uh, but their real forms can be different. So actually, we will consider real forms of uh, uh, even orthogonal group. This will be OPQ, P plus Q equal to 2N, or quaternic uh, orthogonal group. And uh, also real forms of SP2NC, so this will be SP2NR, and also quaternic SP. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, so actually I break the table into two parts, so this, uh, O and SP, uh, we will, uh, the first two lines, actually we will study them together, and for the second two lines, uh, so, so, so we will also study them together. They are uh, all orthogonal groups, so the forms could be OPQ, and uh, so it will pair with metaplatic groups, which are double covering of SP2 and R. And, uh, so I would like also uh, notice you that the dual group of uh, these things uh, for O2 uh, and C will be O2 and C, and the SP2 and C will be SO2 and plus one. And uh, the, the dual group of uh, all orthogonal group will be symplectic group, and uh, the dual group of the metaplectic group also will be symplectic group. So if you look at the dual side, there will be kind of natural embeddings for dual group if you change the size of groups. And uh, if, if this GV is orthogonal, we will just say uh, fix the constant epsilon, which is equal to one, and uh, if it's symplectic, we will fix it equal to negative one. And the two a V and a V check will be just be from the space over C, uh, so that this GV will be isometry group of this phone space. Uh, epsilon means uh, e epsilon equal to one means symmetric. Epsilon equal to negative one means uh, skew symmetric. And uh, to say the real phone, actually we will just take a, a conjugate linear automorphism of this V, which compatible with the uh, form on this V space and. Uh, so suppose j square is equal to plus one, it will give you real groups uh, like OP, OPQ, SP2, and R. And if j square is equal to negative one, it will give you quaternic groups. And then this uh, GJV will be the real form of GV, which are the thing which commute with j in the complex group GV. Okay, so our starting point will be, so I think, politically correct, it should be starting from a neopotent orbit in the dual group, or duly uh, algebra of the dual group. And uh, uh, so this will, uh, for classical groups, it will describe by Young diagrams. So suppose this orbit has uh, uh, 
uh, diagram uh, has rows like A1, A2 to AS. Then from this diagram, actually we can construct uh, uh, infinitesimal character. Uh, we call it uh, in this way. So if A is uh, all integer, we just take one, two, uh, to A minus one divided by two. Uh, so all things here are integer, and if A is even, then everything in the tuple will be half integer. And then you just, for each A1, you just put the row A1 inside here. So anyway, you get a bunch of numbers, and uh, probably you will not get uh, longer enough a set of numbers to uh, name an uh, infinitesimal character of the, uh, the universal enveloping algebra, then you just put some zeros inside. So anyway, this, this is a construction of in, infinitesimal character from the uh, Newpotent orbit uh, in the Dewey algebra. And uh, we would like to consider a special type of infinite, uh, neopotent orbit. Uh, we consider this type of neopotent orbit is because it's perfectly well to be handled by theta correspondence. So let's take, uh, assume that this uh, neopotent orbit in the Dewey algebra, we call it a purely even if all AI are odd when the Dewey group, uh, a, a, epsilon check is equal to one, it means that this G uh, uh, dual Lie group is uh, orthogonal group. Uh, notice that for orthogonal group, a, a, a partition or a Young diagram represent a neopotent orbit in the, uh, for orthogonal group means all rows, if, if all even rows occur in even times. So, but we assume that everything, uh, uh, only odd row occur. So there's nothing to do with even rows. And uh, also uh, for the epsilon check equal to negative one case, it's, it means that the dual side is a symplectic group. Then we will assume everything, uh, every row is even row, uh, is even. And uh, uh, moreover, we would like to so, so we call this the set of this type of neopotent orbits be in the dual side be the set of purely even orbits. And uh, uh, we we are called a, a subset of uh, orbits in the even purely even orbits be the quasi distinguish distinguished orbit if it further satisfies certain. Uh, conditions on the length of each uh, row. So basically we have this kind of technical condition, but uh, uh, it's saying that A2i is bigger than A2i plus one if it satisfies this condition. Uh, anyway, so I want to say that there's uh, uh, inclusions of set, these sets of orbits. So first purely even orbits will, of course, by definition contains the quasi-distinguished orbit. And then it actually contains all distinguished orbit. Distinguished orbit means the orbit cannot uh, properly, uh, it cannot sit in any uh, proper levy of the uh, group G. So at the due side, it's, it's this, uh, you have distinguished orbit, but if you uh, take the due, this will correspond to rigid spatial uh, neopotent orbit. And uh, what we have is uh, take the babbage vogen due of the neopotent orbit, uh, you will get a set of representation, uh, uh, neopotent orbit which contains a rigid spatial neopotent orbit. So this rigid means that this orbit is not an induced orbit. Uh, so philosophically, you should think that uh, the rigid orbit should be the build, kind of building block of other neopotent orbit because other neopotent orbit is induced from the uh, rigid orbit. So th this, so what we can, the case we can treat is kind of uh, a, 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 set, a reasonable set of neopotent orbit, I think, I should say. Okay, so then we would like to, so it's, in, 
in, in some cases, actually, this character here, uh, uh, what we define uh, start, if you're starting from a purely even orbit, may not be a integral uh, infinitesimal character. But anyway, we can still manage to define the meaning of uh, special neopotent uh, representation. This star uh, representation attached to the uh, orbit in for the at, at least uh, for the purely even neopotent orbit at the dual side, we should define uh, weakly special unipotent representation in this uh, as the following. So first, this pi should have infinitesimal character, look like uh, chi O check, and then the associated complex associated variety should be contained in O bar when uh, O is the Babbage Fulgen dual of the, uh, this, this orbit. Okay, here I, I'm kind of lazy that not writing down what you should do for the metaplatic group. And actually you can also define a similar dual map. Uh, so get a, a from the uh, O chat for the SP2N and get a, a neopotent orbit for the uh, group side, uh, uh, the algebra of the group side. So uh, I should say it's it's not this map is not exactly the same as the uh, Lucic uh, Sparsenstein's definition of dual map. Anyway, the, uh, one can define it, and it it will give you so called I think uh, metaplatic special neopotent orbit. And uh, furthermore, if this a GJV is a metaplatic group, we should assume that pi is genuine, means that the uh, center of uh, the metaplatic group act uh, faithfully. And then we collect the set of uh, all representations satisfy this condition. We call the set be the set of special, uh, special unipotent representation attached to this purely even orbit. So, uh, again, this definition is equivalent to say that the annihilator ideal of pi is equal to the maximal primitive ideal uh, with uh, this infinitesimal character. Uh, this is, can be proved by translate uh, what Babish Vogel has and using some uh, consideration in uh, theta correspondence. Okay, uh, so of course the natural conjecture is that this should consist of unitary representations. So how to construct elements or candidates in this uh, set is uh, another topic I want to discuss. So this construction is based on the inductive structure of the neopotent orbit. So let's just talk uh, or O check, which is purely even orbit. Then we call a descent sequence in the dual side is the sequence of uh, from the spaces such that every space is uh, has the same uh, kind of either symmetric or skew symmetric, same as the original vector space B check. And uh, uh, each orbit O uh, is given by removing the first i column of uh, O check. So for example, so suppose you have uh, this type of, uh, okay, so uh, this, this will be O0. Uh, which is original O for, say, uh, mm, okay. Uh, this will be for S O two M plus uh, S O. Okay, never mind. Let's let's do it later. So we will have a very precise example. Okay. Uh, 
so we uh, we also can do the similar thing in the group side. So we say we have a descent sequence for a neopotent orbit O, which is uh, 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 corresponded uh, uh, cross corresponded to O check through the babish vogan duality. Uh, if we have a chain of from the spaces such that the starting spaces is just the original v, space V with the uh, uh, real form, and uh, later uh, each one will be switching back uh, from the orthogonal and symplectic, so switching the sign of the form. Uh, so this is meaning of second line, and it will stay be uh, real or quaternic if the original group is real or quaternic. It means that J square is same as uh, J I square. Uh, so this means the descent sequence of uh, spaces. And uh, from the uh, uh, data of the dual side, it's not very difficult to get a sequence. Of course, this sequence is not unique. Uh, you can change the form uh, for example, this, this Ji will maybe correspond to OPQ, where PQ, PQ can vary. Because the dual side, you only get complex group. Anyway, uh, so to construct elements inside this set, the construction is like you take any character, finite order character of the group, which basically is uh, uh, the, the, the Finite char order characters will be uh, determinant character of, or some kind of strange character for OPQ, uh, and then you define the representation from the theta correspondence. Here, omega v1, v, v0, v1 will be the V representation corresponding to the dual pair of uh, gv1 and gv, uh, gv0, gv2. Uh, this kind of dual pair, and the you, you you have a kind of chain of uh, uh, dual pairs from the uh, descending descent sequence. Then uh, you just tensor them together and uh, twist by the character. Then take the invariant for all groups uh, which are not v1, uh, not v0, and take the co maximal co-invariant. Then you will get a representation. It's not clear that. Uh, whether this is non-zero or not, but if it's non-zero, then it is actually unitrizable, uh, irreducible, unitrizable, and uh, all check neopotent. So of course, uh, the expectation is that uh, at least uh, for purely even uh, orbits, all the representations which are weakly neopotent, unipotent will be constructed in this way. Uh, so what we managed to do is, uh, for the right now currently is for the quasi distinguished neopotent orbit. Uh, this is the paper, and uh, for the general case, uh, it's a work in progress with joined with Babish, Sun, and uh, Chen Bozhu. So actually, for the construction, a lot of people has con con contributed to this problem, like uh, Babish, I think. This construction is maybe not related to Morgan, but anyway, Moglin has did a lot of work, and uh, He Hongyu also uh, did a lot of work. Actually, we will use uh, the idea of uh, Hongyu and uh, uh, Jeff Eden, uh, uh, Prisbinder, Trapa also has some works uh, on this. I think this list may not be very complete. But this kind of construction is through in the uh, works from, I don't know, maybe 90s, people is kind of expecting this kind of construction will give you new unipotent representation. And uh, so what we managed, managed to do in this paper is say everything very precise. So here I like to to state the precise uh, result, I like to introduce more notations. So suppose you have a neopotent orbit in the 
uh, or cojoint orbit, then we uh, always will fix a cut-down decomposition, and uh, it's natural to consider the uh, real orbits whose complexification is exactly this O, and uh, this set of real orbits will uh, correspond to one one correspond to k orbit on the non-compact part in section of this neopotent uh, orbit on the non-compact part of the cut-down decomposition through the constant Sekikuchi correspondence. And I think this correspondence is actually not only give you the orbit correspondence, but also give you the shift uh, correspondence on the level of shift. Um, so suppose you have a G, uh, this G is a real group, G equivalent shift on the this side, uh, it will trans, uh, one one correspond to k equivalent shift on the uh, p star in set O, and uh, mm, so this real neopotent orbits are related to the invariant of representation called wave front cycle, and uh, this, but for computation reason, I think associate cycle will be more uh, useful in our setting that you actually uh, actually, what one can do is that for any representation in G, such that uh, it's, uh, uh, we should assume that a social cycle of, uh, so a social cycle, uh, a social variety of pi is contained in the orbit closure, then you will have a, a well defined map from. Uh, this set of representation to uh, uh, the Gordon D group of K equivalent coherent shift supported on this P star in set O. Actually, it's just a fancy name. It's really just a linear integral combination of uh, irreducible vector bundles on this set. And uh, this P star in set O will be decomposed into finite many K orbit. And uh, each of them whose complexification will be the original orbit. And uh, there's a special subset of this KO called uh, a set of admissible orbit data. These are uh, irreducible vector bundles on a single orbit inside this set, uh, which satisfies certain condition. The condition is more or less that the derivative of this vector bundle is half density bundle. And, uh, okay, so main theory is looking like this. Suppose you have an orbit which is uh, quasi -di distinguished, then the following map is actually a uh, bijection. Uh, it says that for any uh, un uh, unipotent representation attached to this orbit, you just calculate the uh, characteristic cycle, uh, characteristic character, uh, associate character. It always will be a certain uh, admissible orbit data. And uh, this will give you a parameterization of this set. And uh, moreover, this set is constructed by theta correspondence, just as what I said. Uh, and uh, also, we can show that this set of this this uh, set of unipotent representation actually is consists of uni unitary representations. So, uh, before I go to the some uh, say some before I say something about the proof of this result, I like to say that actually Vogan has made a even finer conjecture. On this things, he said that if you just look at the k structure of a k spectrum of the representation pi, it should look like a global section of vector bundle given by the characteristic uh, given by this characteristic uh, associate character. Uh, uh, assuming that the co uh, uh, co-dimension of the boundary of this orbit is bigger than two, uh, bigger or equal than two, I think. Uh, so it, it's not clear whether 
this is really true, but actually this conjecture can be verified in certain cases. And I think Babish has uh, several works for a complex group. And uh, in, in a special case, uh, uh, Hong Yan Lo and uh, I has a work saying that if the, the diagram for O satisfies the condition, it's like the colon, uh, the Yang diagram corresponds to uh, this O is look like each co uh, later column is longer than the total number of boxes on the right. This, okay, sorry. This position actually is true, so. But yeah, it, it's, it's still a conjecture, so. But it's very interesting that one can precisely describe the case spectrum. Okay, so to the construct the representation, uh, I like to use this local theta correspondence. It's basically a correspondence between certain subset of representations of two different type of groups. For example, we will use uh, G and G prime will be O, P, Q, and uh, SP, P, uh, SP2 and R. This is a dual pair. And, uh, uh, the construction is like uh, you take the very representation of a very big metaplatic group uh, so that G and G prime will be mutual commute, uh, a centralizer of each other in this symplectic group. And uh, you take the very representation of the corresponding metaplatic group. And then you take the maximal pi as a typical quotient for any pi. Uh, for the, here I should do the double covering, I think. There's a lot of experts in here, I don't need to explain. <laughs> so anyway, the multiplicity space of the pi isotypic uh, quotient will be the uh, natural representation of G prime tilde. And uh, of course, this may not be zero. Uh, if, uh, and may not be non-zero. If it's non-zero, then it will have a unique irreducible quotient. Uh, this is called theta lift of pi. Uh, so to prove this, uh, it's a lot of people's work and only settled recently by Gan Takeda and Gan Sun. I think a good property of this is if pi is unitary and uh, one will get a unitary representation if in the stable range. So uh, this is a well-known result by Jian Shu Li and uh, there are also a notion called semi-stable range. This is by He Hong Yu. And uh, so this is not that relevant. So I like to say, give an example of the construction. So not on the dual side, but the, on the uh, group side. So uh, neopotent orbits in the uh, non-compact part of the carton decomposition are parameterized by sign the Young diagram where the number of plus and minus are exactly, so for, for example, for OPQ, number of plus is uh, P and the number of minus is Q. And for SP2N, plus and minus both has a number of uh, plus and minus. Okay, this, so, so this picture are orbits in the, uh, uh, so, so K orbits in, uh, uh, K new, Neopotent k orbits in p star, and if you remove the plus uh, signs, it will give you the complexified orbits in the group. And okay, uh, so the in the dual side, actually you can also write down very explicitly. So this orbit is corresponded to this one, and the, the next is something like this. This is in O3. This is in O6. And uh, then you have you have something in O13. Is this 13? No. Something like this is okay. Is this uh, 
Yeah, I think that's that's fine. Yeah. So so this is okay. This is O. The dual side in the dual side. So it will, it will, it will correspond to these pictures. And uh, then uh, you kind of take a, okay, so this picture is not very new. Actually, you will see this from Kappa Tracy's resolution of singularity for new proton orbit closure. And uh, also, Alta has did this thing exactly for the KP, uh, P star orbit case. Uh, so uh, so we, we will make a definition of descent of new proton orbits. It's basically just uh, deleting columns. Uh, so this will be called descent. And uh, then uh, well, our construction here, uh, it's almost the same as the following. So our construction is here. Uh, this construction. It's almost the same as the following construction. It's just saying that you do the successive theta lifting. So you, you're starting from an orbit. So, so the last one will be the trivial orbit. So it, of course, a unipotent orbit, a unipotent representation corresponding to trivial orbit will be the finite dimensional representation. And uh, so you take a character of the last guy uh, and then you do the theta lift of the uh, of of pi i plus one, and uh, then you allow to twist in each step. And uh, so to prove the theorem, basically you should prove that in each type this theta lift do, does not vanish. And also one should keep track of the social character, showing that each step it will give you uh, some associated character which live in the uh, admissible orbital data. And uh, moreover, one should show that this map, when you allow chi varies, it will give you all, uh, uh, all admissible orbital data. And uh, then the infinitesimal character of theta lifts is uh, easy, kind of easy to compute using uh, Pritzpinder's result of uh, correspondence of infinitesimal character. And as a consequence, you will see that all these representations constructed in this way will be unipotent representations by definition. So for the unitarity, it's a result by the estimate of uh, matrix coefficient use uh, explicit, explicit realization of free representation. So it's basically uh, kind of work of Jian uh, Shuli in the stable range and uh, He Hongyu in the semi-stable range. Actually, we use the strength of uh, He's result in uh, by Harris Li Sun, and uh, they can show that uh, not only the so so they basically can show that the matrix coefficient integral uh, is non-negative. So in particular, this this guy will be uh, unitary. So I, actually, I didn't define what is this guy. So this is this theta bar is the uh, high tensor. Oh, sorry. So this guy, this guy is uh, v v prime divided by something radical of uh, matrix coefficient integral. So it's, it's basically the most natural integration. Uh, you just take the matrix coefficient of the representation and the, the V representation. So you define this map, bilinear map, to C by taking UV to Integration against uh, uh, U V. This is a matrix coefficient pairing. This is just a uh, counter gradient representation. In the D T. Okay, integrate against this one. So therefore, this guy 
if it's yeah it, it, so so this integration first may not be converged and uh, secondly may not be non zero so what we uh, managed to do is that to show this integration is converged in this our construction and uh, non zero by the non negativity argument in uh, Harris D. Sun. Yeah, unitarity, non negative. Yeah. And uh, so the difficult part is kind of uh, show that this integration non vanish. Then you should use some geometry from the moment map. It will give you a, a kind of. Uh, okay, so basically you compute the. Uh, this uh, the, the social character of this one, and uh, to show that it's actually what you want, and uh, so there's two bounds, and uh, showing that these two bounds are actually match. So one bound is from the uh, geometry of the moment map, which will give you upper bound, and the analysis from the Dijon principle series will give you the lower bound. Uh, so I like to say. I'm sorry, it's a, I, I, yeah. Uh, so if the, the geometry of moment map is like this. Suppose you have uh, uh, an orbit which, uh, if, so you have two groups, and suppose you have an orbit which is from a descent procedure, means deleting columns, and uh, then you will have an upper bound controlling the, uh, a social character for the theta lifting. Uh, basically, suppose the representation itself is uh, O prime bounded, then the lift will be O bounded, and uh, the social character will controlled by a naturally defined geometric uh, uh, map uh, from the set of Gauten D group. Uh, actually, this is a group homomorphism of the Gauten D group of the corresponding orbit. And uh, so to get a lower bound, uh, so one should use analysis. It's it's like uh, it's an from an idea of her that you not just consider theta, but you consider double theta lift. Then it uh, then this guy will kind of closely related to parabolic induction, and uh, for the par uh, the social character of uh, uh, a social cycle of parabolic induction is kind of uh, uh, known by Babish's work. So uh, you kind of perform the, this inequality twice, you will get an upper bound of the social character. And uh, from the parabolic induction, you will have a kind of lower bound of the social variety. And, uh, so these two bounds are actually the same. So it will show you that this inequality getting from the geometry of moment map will be equality. And uh, let's see. So yeah, so this is kind of te technical result we need. So suppose uh, this orbit is given by uh, 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 O is a kind of uh, new potent orbit whose column is given by case C0, C1 to CK, uh, and uh, counted from left to right. And uh, if O prime is the descent of O, it means that just deletes the first column. So technical uh, result is we need kind of need C0 is bigger than C1. Uh, if uh, this CJV is a sympathetic group or metaplatic group, then if the original representation is uh, uh, O prime bounded, then the new representation is O bounded. Moreover, we have uh, this equality of the social character. And uh, so then we kind of get, uh, uh, using this successive uh, iterated theta lifting, we will get a lot of new uh, unipotent representation so in particular, just as what I said, the characteristic 
character map to the admissible orbital data is a subjective map. So we get a lower, a lower bound of number of unipotent representations in this case, which is seen as a number of associate, uh, admissible orbital data. And uh, moreover, for split classical group, the number of unipotent representation is counted by, I think, uh, Babish's uh, work. And uh, Babish used a lot of results of Vogel and McGovern. Anyway, so the, for, we are using theta lifting. So theta lifting has a group good property. Everything through a certain stable range theta lifting could go to a split classical group. So from their result, we will get an upper bound of number of unipotent representation, and uh, it turns out this bound is sharp. And so it means that from theta correspondence, we got all unipotent representation for the, I think, uh, quasi-distinguished orbit in the dual side. I think that's all for my talk.